morning guys, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft. Today I'd like to address a topic in the Percussion Revolver series. And this topic gets a lot of discussion and controversy, so I would like to just make my two cents worth of it. And the topic is chain fire. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the term, a chain fire occurs whenever you fire a percussion revolver and one of the other chambers or all of them also fire at the same time a sympathetic discharge what causes this usually it's actually back here in the back what happens is in the cocking process quite often the nipple uh, cap will come loose on a nipple or fall off without you noticing it and upon firing, there's a huge flash right back in here. In fact, if you'll look at some videos, you'll find them. People firing percussion revolvers at night, there's a huge flash back here. That can be redirected into the touch hole, into the nipple, and detonate another one, just like the flash hole in a flintlock. The pressure is so intense and so sudden and so, uh, a spark gets lucky in bullseyes. Bang. It goes off. But what causes multiples to fire that way? Well, actually, you're taking a couple of things for granted. And one of the things that you're taking for granted is that each one of these cylinders is truly round. I can assure you they are probably not. Now, the reason I make that statement... Okay. One of the reasons for a multiple chain fire is because of the cylinder not truly being round. Now let me explain that. When you take the cylinder and mic it, that means to take precision gauges and actually measure, actually measure the openings that are the chambers. Quite often they are not truly round. And reason for this is in the manufacturing process they have pilot holes and this device comes down with all these you know bits running at the same time they hit and they cut it in well they kind of dance just to slide them out when they first hit in the industry it's called run out and it means that it's not truly round it's pretty dang close but it's not truly round now to test this theory years ago when I was developing this idea what I did was, to test it, is I took my cylinder, I removed the nipples, and then I loaded the, the chambers with the proper size ball, the one I was already using, which was a 451 at the time. Rammed it down normal to the normal depth. Then I took the cylinder, sat it flat onto two layers of heavy aluminum foil, and I took an X-Acto knife and I cut it all the way out. Then I slid the cylinder up through that hole in the aluminum foil and I ran masking tape all the way around so it's sealed, okay? I got this, this big uh, skirt of aluminum foil and then this. Then I took a super high power bore light. Turned out all the lights in the room. It was at night, of course, and I sat there and gave myself 20, 25 minutes for my eyes to adjust to night vision. I then stuck the bore light up into a single cylinder nice and tight and I turned it on. Theoretically with a perfectly round cylinder and a perfectly round ball going into it there should be no light whatsoever escape around that ball and yet three of the cylinders I could see a faint trace of light. Click it on, click it off and you'd see it up here and it wasn't coming around this it was actually coming through that. And that told me right there that three of my chambers were not truly 360 concentric round. Now, how does this apply to us? What it means is, is that an undersized ball can cause chain fire. Even though it grips it tight, it doesn't walk forward. If it does not completely fill up all of that space, fire can flash around and get it. So, usually a one sympathetic firing comes from the back in my experience. And that's where a cap's gone off, the flash is hit, and another one, normally the two top on either side, go. When you get three and four at a time going, I always suspect undersized ball. Because enough flash was there and it ran around the edge of the ball. 
and got it. How do we prevent this? It's very simple. Using wads or using grease on the top. Now back in the day, they used paper cartridges or foil cartridges, which were quite often dipped in beeswax or lard or some other grease in the loading process, so it acted as a seal as well. And they used conical bullets that had a grease groove and it had a line of grease on it. This kept that edge wet with grease and therefore limited the amount of exposure that, that flash had to get into the chamber. In our modern times, Wonder Wads or bore grease serves the same purpose. Proper size fitting caps will greatly reduce. If the cap is a little loose, pinch it so it's a little bit oval and put it on there. That seems to be, works for me very well. As far as the out of round chambers, very little you can do about that. Um, I took mine to somebody that was a professional machinist that had actual plug gauges, which are perfectly cylinder rods that are measured and he found that three of those chambers were out by about uh, two thousandths which doesn't seem like a lot it isn't but it is enough space for fire to run around so but blackie when i load i get a ring that is correct but look at the ring quite often the ring is real thick on one side and real thin on the other that tells you that cylinder is not evenly cutting it all the way around kind of getting into some you know precision stuff here and with the loading tool especially this early type colt type the loading rod if you'll notice it right here does not go vertically straight it kind of angles and then it goes straight that angle in the beginning wants to push the ball to one side a little bit thus making that slightly offset cut and that's all it needed for a sympathetic discharge. I was using at that time 451 round ball, and it was not quite enough. And so the flash sometimes could go around and detonate, and I might get one, two, or three to go. I very quickly went to 454, and eventually 457 round ball, and that cured that problem. Because now I've got an overabundance of lead, and when I cut that lead in, the driving band, the cut around the ball is much wider, so it's sealing the chamber much more. As far as so, can it occur? Yes, I personally have seen it. I, the, in fact, with this gun, this was my original uh, Griswold and Gunson that I got in the 70s. The very first time I ever pulled the trigger on this, I had a chain fireball six. Why? Wrong size round ball. The, I had little or no experience. I had seen it demonstrated. Somebody else had one. I wanted one. I got it. When I went to buy ammunition, I told the guy it was a 44, so he gave me 440 round ball instead of 451. The balls were so undersized that when I pulled the trigger, it chain fired. It was a memorable experience. And so from that, I began my research and found out what was correct and what I needed to do for the gun. Okay. I hope this helps, guys. I hope this gives you some idea of how to prevent chain fire and what is actually occurring. Please leave any comments or suggestions in the box below. I'm Blackie Thomas for Shaman's Forge Bushcraft, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.